extremely grateful for the support of 100,000 Strong and its sponsors for making this trip possible for our students. At California State University Monterey Bay, many of our students are the first in their families to attend college and the children of migrant farm workers. So supporting their cultural capital through this trip has reinforced both their academic and personal self-esteem. One of the things that stuck out for me more is uh, to be able to compare the health systems that they have over there in Mexico and how different they are to the ones that we have here. The word diabetes is something new for them because they didn't have that before because they just started pretty much eating these products so processed, like chips, cookies, pretty much everything that you can buy packaged at the store. So they don't really know how to keep this balance and they don't know how much pretty much damage they are doing to themselves by eating those things when they're probably their their parents or their grandparents were only eating plants that they grew themselves. My favorite part of this trip has been our visit to Kashiki Week which is a bio preserve. We slept in hammocks and we had to take military showers. We depended on our own resources and it was, it was nice to know that we could actually do it because when you're in the U.S., everything is given. You don't really see the value of it. You can see how the Mayas were so conscious about their own resources. So it was very good to see, kind of feel what it felt like to be a Maya in that, in that way. We really wanted our students to not only understand the rich cultural values of the Maya and their health and nutritional practices, but also to see how these play out on a daily basis within an increasingly compromised ecostructure. While we were in the Yucatan, we witnessed firsthand the ways in which drought and excessive temperatures due to climate change are affecting the diet and water supply of the Maya. Our students became even more aware of how the choices they make in their daily lives impact cultures in the Americas 3,000 miles away. My background is with health and drug and alcohol education. So what I'm trying to take back with me is, you know, maybe solutions or ways of how these communities are helping themselves to learn a little bit more about their health or what can they do to change the lifestyle or nutrition as well and be able to take that to my community and be able to relate that back to um, the patients that I work with. As an immigrant from Argentina and someone whose immediate family resides in Mexico, I can personally attest to the benefits of being exposed to the culture of the Americas. I am committed to facilitating as many students uh, studying abroad as possible. Being able to speak Spanish and having my culture background, I was able to make a connection with the Mayan people right away. They taught me how to speak a little Mayan, which was really interesting and wonderful to know because they saw that we had an interest in learning something about them, just as we had an interest to teach them something, and it was like a mutual connection. As a Mexican immigrant coming to the United States, we want to demonstrate that things can be done. With this uh, wonderful program that we have now at uh, Monterey Bay, I have been able to show some of the students our cultural heritage. Without the generous support of 100,000 strong and its supporters, it would have been practically impossible to come uh, with our students and experience this Mundo Maya that is very special. Throughout this journey in the Yucatan, our students have become strong global citizens and now clearly understand the intricate combination of freedom and responsibility that only a study abroad experience can offer. <laughs>